Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be mastering the RPK-12 light machine gun for the support class in Battlefield 4. And for those of you not familiar with the mastery process, it's where you get 500 kills with a gun and the game gives you a nice little mastery dog tag for that weapon. Unless it's one of the newer weapons that was added to the game, in which case the stat tracking didn't get updated until they added in dog tags later down the road, which is the case with the RPK-12. So if you have, say, 100 kills with the RPK-12 and you go for your mastery now, you're still going to need to get 500 more kills because the stat tracking didn't begin until a little bit later in the the game which is what happened to me i got 500 kills with the gun and no mastery dog tag now let's talk about the rpk-12 and what it represents in battlefield 4 there's a whole new series of ak weapons in bf4 that represent sort of the modern ak platform we've got the ak-12 the aku-12 and then the rpk-12 and aside from sporting a newer look with a top rail and none of the wooden furniture of the classic AK weapons, these guns also shoot a different round. And you'll notice that when you compare the RPK-12 with the RPK-74M. Both guns look almost identical in design, except this one just looks a little bit more modern, more metal, and it does shoot a different bullet. And that means it's going to be doing a different amount of damage per shot. It is a light machine gun that performs very much like an assault rifle with a fairly large magazine. It does 24.5 damage maximum, drops off to 18 damage, just like an assault rifle would because it's got a assault rifle style round in it. But it does have a 60 round magazine, which means you can drop quite a few people before before you need to reload. And the nice thing about having a large 60 round magazine is that you also don't have a crazy long reload. 2.4 seconds for the short reload, which is great considering that you're gonna be hitting the short reload almost all the time. And if you do manage to chew through all 60 rounds, you've got a pistol for backup as well. So chances are there won't be too many people alive once that situation occurs. And popping up the SimThick stats here, we can start to dissect this weapon and understand what it's good for. It's got a very low rate of fire, 600 rounds per minute and considering it also isn't shooting a particularly heavy round that means you're not going to be doing that much damage per shot which puts it in the lighter category of machine guns so very very low damage potential overall you're going to get out damaged by most things you run into on the battlefield fortunately it's a very accurate weapon if you look in the recoil department you'll notice not only does it have a very low first shot recoil but all of the recoil following up on it isn't particularly extreme so you're going to have lots of accurate shots which makes it a great medium range support weapon even a potentially long range support weapon although i wouldn't really recommend using a high powered optic on this because it takes away some of your versatility and remember once you start zeroing in on that long range target it's going to take you a few shots to take him down and try not to stand still for too long otherwise you're going to end up sniper food now as far as outfitting this gun to get the maximum performance out of it i tried the heavy barrel i tried the stubby grip i tried a lot of different things to try and improve the recoil and accuracy of this gun but running it stock was still very good again one of the side effects of the latest attachments update it seems that most weapons are still pretty damn good when you just run them stock without any attachment so it kind of foregoes the whole attachment system altogether which again i think is a bit of a mistake and they need to revisit this but uh, for the time being it means that if you unlock the rpk12 it's pretty damn good as is until you unlock whatever site you want for it as for farming kills with this gun, I recommend playing Rush or Team Deathmatch. I prefer Rush, and I did play quite a bit of Rush with this, but every now and then you run into servers that get a little too team stacked, and then the games just aren't that fun. There's not enough kills to go around for everyone, or you're on this side that's just getting slaughtered repeatedly, and it's not that fun. TDM is a good balancing factor. Even if your team is getting stomped in TDM, there's usually ways you can still manage to squeeze out quite a few kills, as long as you understand in the maps and the spawn camping mechanics of it you can still make a bad situation of spawn camping on your own team uh, into a situation where you can get a lot of easy kills because usually when the enemy team is spawn camping you they're being a little bit more careless with their lives and they're not expecting the enemies to be cornering so carefully and playing so conservatively that it kind of surprises them when their enemy isn't just panicking and running around like a bunch of headless chickens. Rogue Transmission on TDM is a great map for this weapon because it's pretty much exclusively medium to long range engagements. Of course, once they start pushing into your building, it can get close quarters, but uh, this gun definitely excels on this map. 
switching over to Dawnbreaker on Rush. This map can be really good until people start doing a little too much of the rooftop camping. Uh, it gets a little crazy with vehicles at times, but there is plenty of infantry to go around. I think this is a 48 player rush game. It might be a 64 player rush game, but uh, there was tons of infantry and they've already pushed past our first set of MCOMs. But once they do that, it doesn't necessarily mean that the defending force has been overrun. And I'm sort of in that limbo situation transitioning between the first set of MCOMs and second set and taking out as many tickets as I possibly can. Teams tend to get a bit of tunnel vision with pushing forward to the next set of MCOMs that they can easily overlook a small group of infantry hanging out behind them and picking off a lot of kills. Now as I head towards the 500 kill marker for this weapon, I am a little bit disappointed with the reward system in Battlefield 4. Granted, the game's been out for a while, but there's so many games out now that give you all these really cool customizations and camos for weapons. There's plenty of camos in Battlefield 4, but none of them particularly make you feel like you have a unique looking weapon. It would be cool to get camos that represented how many kills you had with each gun or something like that. I don't know, maybe I've been playing a little too much of the free-to-play shooters these days, but there's definitely some features in those games that I would love to see come across to the Battlefield series. I know some of you guys are probably still remembering that the gun bench feature is something that at some point supposedly will be coming out for Battlefield field hardline that allows you to kind of create your own custom skins for your guns in game that other players can actually see while you're running around and if you've been following the call of duty black ops 3 info you'll see that they've actually implemented a feature that's pretty much the gun bench from hardline not saying that they ripped off hardline by any means it's not a unique idea but uh, it is kind of unfortunate that the cod series beat battlefield to this specific feature and hopefully it's something that if it's successful in hardline will actually make it into other battlefield games considering that that Hardline's totally dead on the PC and there's not really much chance of me playing that game again because I literally can't. Not on PC anyway, unless I want to take up console gaming in a bigger way and in case you guys haven't heard, there seems to be a lot of talk about developing mouse and keyboard peripherals for the consoles. We'll have to see what actually becomes of this in the long run as it could kind of upset the console dynamic, but there's a lot of stuff going on. Changes in the air and we'll have to see what uh, becomes of the console PC gaming community in a couple years time. And here we are pushing on to the last set of MCOMs in Zavod 311, probably one of the best rush maps available in Battlefield 4. It wasn't always this way, but it did get a bit of a touch up and MCOMs moved around a bit and now it plays out really well. This last set of MCOMs is by far the hardest to get through, uh, but if you can do it, it's certainly a testament that your team knew what they were doing and were working together. As always guys, thanks for watching and let me know in the comments which weapon you'd like me to master next. There's a list of the remaining weapons in the video description. I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap, signing out.